Hello everyone, welcome to this new tutorial of the Andor opening title scene. It's quite straightforward um, to make it. First we will need a reference image, you can grab one on the web uh, and then just insert it by doing shift A image reference image. Make sure you're in top view so the Z axis, the blue one, uh, really looking down and uh, you can actually set the opacity as well of the of the image uh, in the side panel if you need to and then we will just make uh, a plane and then in edit mode just merge all the vertices together at center and then just in edit mode G to grab and then to position it where we want to start extruding our letters so just position that first vertex somewhere where you can start really nicely um, here I chose to start at the beginning and then you just need to press E and then make sure you're in edit mode and then e, e and X to extrude on the X axis and then you just uh, move along and follow uh, the guidelines of the reference image and then E to extrude again position it Click to leave it there and then E to extrude again, etc. And then once you arrive at the end, then uh, you just really need to come near the first initial vertex and then actually select this one and then the last one and then merge at last so everything is neatly connected and then you just select everything and F to fill and we have the first letter so let's go to the next one and again it's really straightforward make sure in, you're in top view Select one vertex, actually, uh, whichever you want to start. Maybe you want to start at a corner where you can actually see nicely where it works best. And then you just keep continuing the same process. E to extrude, etc. And then, again, merge the vertices together and then fill the whole shape. The next letter is a bit tricky, so here you shift D to duplicate the vertex and start over for the letter D. So this one we can see has got really rounded edges. So we will bevel those, so really just uh, follow the curve for the concave edges like here. And on top actually we will be beveling inwards if you like. So just make sure you make a neat 90 degrees corner. So here just follow the Y axis when you're extruding in here the X so you really have that straight corner there and then uh, you just go back down and then merge the vertices again here and duplicate one vertex to start all over to make the line for the inside of the letter and again just uh, follow the curve we will adjust those uh, vertices later on as well if the bevel doesn't work well. So here merge again and then you select both edge boundaries and Alt F to fill. And just repeat the process for the last two letters. It's uh, really easy and straightforward. So once you've uh, finished with all the planes, just adjust that vertex here so we can start beveling, just bring it inside a little bit and um, 
select all faces and then extrude them just ever so slightly so we have a bit of thickness and then select the edges and start beveling by pressing ctrl b and then try to follow the shape of the letter from the reference image and if it's not quite right you can actually like here as you can see uh, you can try moving it or just cancel the bevel and uh, you can just slide the vertex with pressing double G and then G to actually move it so then the bevel will actually work and follow the letter Keep repeating the same process, um, it's really straightforward. Here I cancel the bevel because I just want a little bit more resolution. And then here we want it maybe a bit inside so that the bevel really follows the reference letter. And um, just keep doing the same thing here test to see if it works and if it does you just uh, select all four edges on the corners and just do the same bevel so it's nice and neat and uh, it's exactly the same top and bottom here just uh, follow the reference image as well and just add a little bit of bevel inside so it's not all really sharp corners just ever so slightly it's not gonna matter a lot but it's just nice to have a little bit of smooth corners here as well maybe we need to drag it in a bit and bevel it just uh, adjust it so that it really follows the shape of the letter. Here as well, because it needs it a little bit, so it smooths it out. And let's have a look. Yeah, here it needs a little bit of beveling as well. Now it's better. And here as well, you can then just uh, slide those edges a little bit as well if you need to so that it really looks all nice and smooth so once you're happy with what you have we can just uh, go ahead and hide away the reference image because we won't need it anymore and we can start shading so just click new and make sure you're in cycles um, and then we're just going to keep the principled uh, BSDF and add a few nodes beforehand and plug them into it. So first we're going to add a color ramp, so shift a color ramp, plug the color into the base color and we're going to pick our base colors for our letters so we're going to go for something like brownish dark brown and a light orange kind of hue so that we replicate that copper kind of look and then just make sure you have the node wrangler enabled because we're just going to hit ctrl t to summon image texture mapping and texture coordinates so make sure the object is plugged into the vector and then just click open for the texture uh, to pick an image texture of your liking. So I'm just going to go for water stains here and now we have it on our letters. So let's have a look a bit closer, maybe pick a letter with the least light on it so we have a bit more contrast. Let's go for the letter A here. And what we're going to do next is that we're going to add some roughness. So Pick another color ramp so we can control the roughness, plug the stains in it and the color into the roughness and now we have it and we can actually play with the color ramp here. I'm just going to crank up a little bit the metallic look of our letters 
and um, we can add some bump as well and again plug the water stains the image texture into the height and then the normal of the bump into normal of the principled and now we have some nice profile maybe lower the strength a little bit and uh, one thing that's important is that in the material panel on the side make sure that under the settings and displacement you have displacement and bump selected and what we're going to do next is that we want to punch some holes actually into um, those letters so the bits that are really white we want them to be actual holes so we're going to invert the roughness color ramp and just crunch it a little bit go for a light gray instead of the white and then uh, for our colors up there we're as well gonna crunch them together so we have more contrast and for the lighter color I'm just gonna lower the alpha completely and then plug the alpha into the alpha and here you have it you have those really neat kind of holes corroded holes into this coppery kind of metallic letters and it really really looks nice if you can you can see through it's really cool So there you go, so now you can set your lights and rotation and everything. So I'm just going to clean these nodes a little bit and arrange them nicely so that you can actually screenshot it if you wish. There you go. So let's set up our scene now with the camera and lights and the rotation of our logo. It's quite easy, so as we're working from the top view, just leave the camera in top view and uh, really make it look it down flat on the logo. So if you go into camera view, you can see how it works. And then we will just need one light and rotate the logo and the light to get the effect. So for the logo, uh, we just want to go to frame 130, for example, and just keyframe the rotation of the x-axis to zero, because that's where its origin rotation is. And then you just go back to keyframe one or zero and just put a minus 90, so, and keyframe that. So now when you press play it'll just rotate and go back to its initial position and from the camera view this is how it looks like and now to get that kind of effect where the letters grow as they rotate we just need to set up the light for that so Put an area light and uh, really really long so really stretch it out in terms of size on the x-axis and then really make it point downwards straight onto the logo so really you can see that its beam is parallel to the logo And the next thing what we want to do is actually uh, set the power um, to zero at the beginning and that it fades in uh, to full blast at about frame 10 to 500 watts. And then the last two keyframes for the light will be the rotation 
but here you can see that the logo is intersecting with the light and that's where it looks like like it's growing uh, as it's rotating and when you get to 145 for example you just actually uh, need to set the rotation to zero I mean to the initial position where the light is and then at the very end you just need to make it rotate away so 180 degrees uh, make it rotate away from the logo and that's how you achieve that really cool kind of look where the logo fades in and then it disappears again gradually and if you're wondering about the starry background so the space background so here's the node setup it's quite straightforward we have the color ramp plugged into background and then a noise texture into the color ramp with the scale quite high and then the mapping and the texture coordinate node make sure you've got the generated plugged into the vector and not the object and that's about it i hope you enjoyed it take care and see you next time